Hello everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate but if you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Oh gosh, I am not ready for the shade I'm about to throw in this video. I've been putting off this brand review for so long because it's just like Hiram, stop putting negativity into the universe. We don't need it. No one asked for it. Actually, that's a lie. A lot of you guys asked for this review since the beginning days of my channel. So I think it's well over time that I created this video. So yes, I am talking about Pixie Skincare. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the brand, what my experiences with the products have been, what I think of them from a formulation perspective, and just what I think of the brand overall. I think the nail in the coffin for my decision of making this video was when James Welsh commented on one of my YouTube videos to where he said he couldn't wait for my video on Pixie Skincare so I could bash the brand. Asking you shall receive, bitch. Let's get into it. Pixie Skincare, arguably one of the most popular drugstore brands that has just been all over everyone's Instagrams lately. Pixie Skincare is a naturally focused drugstore brand that you can find at Target, Walgreens, and other similar drugstores. They are most popular for their Glow Tonic that has won many awards and it's received a lot of attention, but they also have a lot of other skincare items. I swear I see the Glow Tonic on like every single shelfie out there. A brand that has been wholeheartedly adopted into the Twitter skincare family family, which if you don't know my thoughts on Twitter skincare threads, oh, girl, you should watch that video. I'm not even going to start on that. However, I don't buy into overhype. Actually, I tend to do the complete opposite of overhype. I'm that person that when I hear everyone talking about how amazing a movie is, when I go to the theater, I'm like, I'm going to hate this movie. I just don't like it when people overhype things because nine times out of 10, I end up being disappointed with something because of the overhype. And this is a brand that has been hyped like none other, I swear. Which is why when so many of you guys were requesting it, I went into Target and I was like, okay, you know, let me check this out. Drugstore skincare is pretty cheap. I don't mind getting a few items. And then I went and I saw that the main products that I wanted to get were like $29 each. And I was like, uh, that's a little expensive for drugstore. Now you guys know me, I do not have a problem when it comes to spending money on skincare. If the formulations are amazing, Amazing. I will drop ridiculous amounts of money to use a product. If you guys haven't seen my video on why I tend to not buy drugstore products, it's because in the drugstores here in Hawaii, you don't have testers to be able to try these products out. And even on the rare chance that they do have testers, they don't give out samples. So you would essentially be paying almost $30 for these products that you haven't tried before. You don't know how they work on your skin and you're just hoping that they're going to work well. I would much rather go to a store that offers samples where I can try something and pay twice that amount of money than to buy something while without having any assurance as to whether it's going to work or not. So immediately when I learned about the brand, I was kind of turned off by that right away. But let's talk about some of the products and the formulas because you know my final say on products always comes down to the ingredient list. What good ingredients do they have? What bad ingredients do they have? I wanna know. So of course we have to first talk about the Glow Tonic which retails for $29 and the small size retails for $15. Now as I talk about this product, I know I'm gonna get so many hate comments about this. <laughs> I just know it. Everyone's gonna be in the comment section like, how dare you, it worked amazing for my skin. So let me start off by saying a few positives. First of all, I'm happy to see that this product is alcohol free with a lot of toners out there and especially exfoliating toners. They tend to have a shit ton of alcohol in their products. And I absolutely hate that because alcohol is overly stripping and drying to the face and just really doesn't offer a lot of benefits at a high concentration. And even though I have my thoughts about the price point in relation to a lot of like brands, Sephora and Ulta, it is relatively cheap. It's $29, you know, that, that won't kill you. So I appreciate that. And that sums it up for my positives. <laughs> so there are many reasons why I don't like this product. Sodium hydroxide is the third ingredient in the product. Now, sodium hydroxide can be beneficial in skincare products because it helps to maintain the pH. What that means is that the product isn't gonna be overly acidic or alkaline to your face. It's not gonna make your skin freak out because of how intense the treatment ingredients are. But sodium hydroxide is only beneficial when it is formulated low on the ingredient list. When it's the third ingredient, honestly, in my opinion, it's gonna have relatively the same effects as a stripping alcohol would. So while this toner may be alcohol free, I just don't like that sodium hydroxide is so high up on the ingredient list because that's just too much of a concentration for me to feel comfortable with. And then the main chief king reason why I cannot stand this product is the fragrance. If you are new here and you don't know my stance on fragrance, I am very against it. I'm not a fan of fragrance in products. I don't think 
it's necessary and a lot of times fragrance only poses as a risk to our skin, potentially causing sensitivity and irritation when there's really no reason for it to be in the product other than to make it smell good. If you wanna see my entire video on that, check out the link in the description box below to my video where I talk all about fragrance and skincare and how you can find it. There is so much freaking fragrance in this thing. Not only do you have fragrance parfum listed in the ingredient list, which is problematic because that could be hundreds to thousands of ingredients. But in addition to that, this product is also formulated with citral, citronelle, geraniol, hexyl cinnamol, hydroxy citronelle, limonene, and linalool. Those are all extremely irritating fragrance ingredients. And that is so many. Like usually when I see limonene and linalool and in an ingredient list, I'm like, Hold up, we're gonna have to reevaluate our relationship here. But to also have fragrance parfum and then all of those is just an insane amount of fragrance that you do not need in a product and will only pose for sensitivity. Not only that, this is a treatment product. You are rapidly exfoliating your face and when you are doing any type of strong treatment on your face, you wanna make sure that the ingredients that the product is paired with are not gonna cause any sensitivity. So it's very ironic to me that they are pumping this product full of fragrance and that only poses as risky and potentially irritating and damaging in the long run. I, oh, and that just annoys me so much about this product and why I am not a fan of it whatsoever. But it's crazy to me that this product is so popular. And I think the reason why is because thanks to Twitter skincare threads, this is usually the first exfoliating treatment that a lot of teenagers get their hands on. And exfoliation is so revolutionary in a skincare routine that oftentimes, even if you're using a really poorly formulated and not really effective product, if you're exfoliating for the first time ever using that, you're going to see results, which is going to make you be like, wow, this is so incredible. When in reality, there's so many other products out there with way better ingredients, a way better formula, and with no irritating side effects to it whatsoever. And I honestly think that's why it's so popular. Anyway, I could blab on and on about this product. Final say is I do not like this product. I think it has way too much fragrance and too much sodium hydroxide for me to be comfortable with, and I think there are much better options out there. If you are interested in seeing what my personal favorite exfoliating products are, check out the link to my video where I talk about how to exfoliate your skin. I list a bunch of them over there, depending on what type of exfoliation ability you're looking for. All right, on to the next product, which is relatively newer, but I see a lot of people posting about. It is the Retinol Tonic, which also retails for $29. As for the positives of this, I do appreciate that there are no dyes used, even though it looks purple. It's just the actual container itself that's purple, so they aren't using any dyes alongside their formula, which can be less irritating for some people. There's also a peptide complex, which is good for conditioning, hydrating, and tightening the skin, and there's no fragrance or parfum listed label. But that being said, the second ingredient in the product is rosemary leaf water, which rosemary extract and rosemary oil are fragrance ingredients that can be irritating to the face. The good thing is that it is diluted in water, which means the risk of it irritating your skin is going to be way less effective. However, it's the second ingredient on the ingredient list, which means you're getting a lot of that, which only increases the possible risk of you having bad irritating effects because of that. And in addition, this is also formulated with jasmine and lavender essential oils, both of which are fragrant essential oils are not good for the skin. Even though people will say that these have like calming and hydrating ability, in reality, they're way more prone to irritate your skin than anything else. But here's the thing about this product that when I first saw it made me go, uh huh? So the main focus of this product is that it has retinol in it. Retinol is amazing for anti-aging effects, getting rid of any damage across the skin. But the thing is, is the retinol is in a toner. And retinol tends to be most effective when formulated in creams or in serums, more emollient, hydrating ingredients that help to deliver the beneficial ingredients into the skin and keep it there. As much as I love toners and essences, in terms of delivering strong treatments like retinol, they aren't gonna be most effective in really targeting that problem that you're facing. And in addition to that, this is a clear bottle that is exposed to light and air. And if you know anything about retinol is that it loses its effectiveness when it's exposed to light and to air, which means you're only really facing possible irritation from that. Correct me if I'm wrong below, but there's a reason why every single retinol I've ever used is protected from light and usually also protected from air. Am I tripping on this or something? Because I was immediately confused when I saw that. And in addition to the retinol being in a toner, I don't think the brand understands like how retinol works because they also released a retinol cleanser, which if you know anything about retinol, it is a leave-on treatment. You need to leave it on the skin for long periods of time in order to see results. If you're using it in a cleanser to where it immediately washes off, you're getting like none of the benefits and therefore it's like completely wasteful and not necessary in a cleanser whatsoever. So when I see them formulating it in a toner and a cleanser, I'm like, are they just using it as a marketing opportunity? But overall, yeah, this toner I just wasn't impressed with and honestly it left me a little bit more confused than 
tempted to buy it. Let's talk about another one of their most popular products, the Glow Mist, which retails for $15, which, you know, is a good price for a facial mist. As for good ingredients, this is formulated with avocado oil, jojoba oil, and a bunch of other hydrating oils, which I think are really great to have in a facial mist to touch up on your hydration throughout the day. I love avocado and jojoba oil. They are amazing for hydrating and controlling the oiliness of the face. But the second ingredient in this product is olive oil. It can have certain benefits when it's at a low concentration, but when it's at a high concentration, it tends to have some pore clogging effects on people's skin and just really isn't the most hydrating ingredient out there. It's a very cheap substitute for other more beneficial and more hydrating ingredients. Not only that, this product is formulated with over 10 fragrant essential oils. Over 10. That's crazy. A bunch of them being citrus essential oils, which are the most irritating for the face and being that they are in a facial mist, going over the top of your skincare and being exposed to light have a big risk of turning phototoxic and just being damaging to the skin. Now, I'm personally not a facial mist person, but I understand why they exist. But knowing that this product has that many essential oils, I think it's a big issue because with a facial spray, you tend to touch up multiple times throughout the day. With standard skincare, you're just applying the product once to your face and leaving it on. So if it does have any irritating ingredients, you're only exposing your skin to them once. With this, you are continually spraying and spraying and spraying over and over and over, which is only going to increase the risk of irritation across your skin. Ugh, just so many things about this brand that I'm just like, I don't get it. So when I saw that, I was immediately like, um, no. No, not the facial mist. Let's talk about the vitamin C serum, which retails for $24. In that product, I counted at least eight essential oils, six of them being citrus extracts, which just, ugh. In a vitamin C serum, why? Why is that necessary? There's this belief that citrus extracts have the ability to exfoliate the skin, but like I said before, they're so unstable that they really are only gonna pose as irritating to your skin. And being paired with vitamin C, which also tends to be really unstable, I'm just not convinced by that product. Now, after going through these popular products, I do want to mention there were two products that I found that are fragrance free. The first being the Glycolic Boost Mask, which I actually used in one of my videos. I can't remember which one it was. Oh yeah, it was a video where I went a week without skincare. I didn't really notice results for that one. I wasn't super impressed, but it is fragrance free. And the Double Cleanse by them, which is also fragrance free, which is funny because that's not even a leave-on product. So it'd be better for fragrance to be in that than it would be for all of these other products, but that's just me. Overall, my thoughts of this brand is that I really just think this is one of those brands that tends to focus a lot on marketing and the experience of skincare, but doesn't deliver a lot of actual beneficial aspects. All the fragrance ingredients will create a nice sensorial experience, but long-term could lead to irritation and damage within the skin. And the other active ingredients that they use really aren't gonna be beneficial as they could be if they were formulated correctly, in my opinion. And all of this at their price point, which I think is pretty expensive for what they're offering. If you really want good drugstore skincare, then I recommend a brand like CeraVe. They have amazing ingredients with so much research backing them up at a really good price point. I don't know guys, I know I'm being like really shady, but honestly, I'm just not personally a fan of this brand. And while it's not the worst brand out there, I definitely think you can go with better and that there are just so many other brands at the same price point at a, or at a little bit of a higher price point that are going to deliver way better results in a very safe way that you'll also be able to fall in love with. And if you want to see what some of those brands are, feel free to subscribe to my channel because I talk about brands and products that I love all the time. What are your guys' thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. I really want to hear your opinions. I know this is going to start a firestorm in the comment section, but so be it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to let me know which brand you want me to review next, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.